Today on the XMark channel, we're going to get this Razer XP1000's ECU all tuned up. And the best part about it, I'm going to tell you how you guys are going to be able to get free tunes. Stay tuned, keep watching right here on the XMark channel. Welcome back, guys. So, today on the XMark channel, uh, we're going to continue on with the Stealth Lifter build. Uh, you guys have seen a lot of videos of a lot of products that I've reviewed. Uh, really heavy focus on, you know, reliability uh, and improving, uh, you know, uh, performance on this unit. And then one of the last things I wanted to do was to work on the ECU. And on a previous video, I talked to you guys about, uh, I was going to come up with a video. Um, did a lot of research. There's a lot of products out there, guys. There's ECU flashes. Um, there's some boxes available that you can buy from other manufacturers. And then there's a product that we're going to talk about today, which is the DinoJet Power Vision 3. So, out of my research of anything I could have bought, this is what I chose. I think this is the best way to go about tuning any of your razors. Let's get into it. First thing I want to talk about, guys. DinoJet Power Vision 3 are available at Power Mods. Give Louie a shout. Uh, he's going to be stocking these units. So for you guys in Canada, where we have a hard time getting a lot of products, Louie will have these for all your razors uh, and also other models as well. But definitely he's going to keep these in stock for the razors. I've already spoke with them. Uh, check them out, guys. PowerMods.com. Uh, and it's the DinoJet Power Vision 3. So let's get into it. So. First thing you're going to get, open up your box, you're going to get this nice little DinoJet Power Series box. Now, for my specific model, this was a uh, 2018 Razor. I'll bring, the, I'll bring the model number in here to you guys. So, as you can see guys, it is a um, PV3-19-04. This is a Power Vision 3 for 1418 Polaris Razor XP 1000s. Uh, I bet you it also does the 19s. I don't think anything has changed. I want to show that to you guys. So what are you getting inside the box? Oh, let's open it up. First thing I was surprised by, how small this unit is. This is all it is, guys. Dino chip, power vision. So we got the unit, which is super slick. By the way, this can be mounted as well. Really like it. We're going to turn this on. We'll go through the menus and stuff. Dino jet sends, uh, we'll see, we got instructions here. We're going to throw those away. I've already read through the instructions. They're missing stuff. Uh, it looks like they didn't update it from the Power Vision, uh, Power Vision to Power Vision 3. Also comes with a USB cable. This will be crucial to getting this hooked up to your computer. You will need uh, a Windows-based computer uh, to be able to upload your tunes. So if you don't know anyone, if you just have an Apple iPhone or a Samsung Galaxy, uh, find someone with a Windows-based PC and um, it doesn't take very long. But we're going to go through all this. Next thing is the diagnostic port which is underneath the hood of your razor this plugs in the unit this unit is also weather resistant uh it can be uh you can actually mount it to your dash if you needed to get you a couple stickers a couple adhesives where i was talking about mounting it and to register uh the warranty for it limited warranty uh, so once you, you get it go to dinojet and uh, register your product so we jump forward a little bit let's talk about this unit so a lot of people are going to be like, well, what are you trying to sell me here, Sean? What do you, why do I even need this? Now I'm going to give you, you know what? I don't want to sell you guys anything. I just want to tell you what I do to my own razor and try to give some justifications to why I'm doing it. And if it fits your needs, then great. Um, I hope you guys, uh, you know, take uh, as much fun as I've had in a lot of mods I've been doing to this. Now, why do I want to tune the ECU in this? And why do I want to do it this particular way? There's reasons for that. Number one, there are many companies out there who will reflash your ECU. You take your ECU out, it's in behind the driver's seat, pop that out, put it in a box, send it to them, they reflash it, send it back. I have an issue with that. Um, every time that you do different modifications to your razor, whether you're changing the exhaust, the full exhaust, intake, you probably will have to send it back and along with stage tunes. So you start with a stage one because you're all stock, which is basically what I am. Performance wise, it's all stock. You're going to have to resend it back to get stage one and a half or stage two or two and a half or whatever that may be. And there's also going to be charges for that. Uh, they're just not going to rehandle your ECU again, plus you have to pay shipping there and back. That was one of my concerns with getting an ECU tune. 
Second concern was, I wanted to be able to stock, flash this thing back to stock. Well, if I had it flashed by a dealer or I had it flashed by a, an aftermarket company, I have to take it back out and send it back again. Plus the downtime, remember we're in Canada here. Uh, I'm not too aware of who does flashing in Canada. There's lots of places in the States. You guys know what trouble it is getting parts back and forth in the States in the downtime. I'm not into that. With that being said, this allows you to go back to stock. It'll allow you to flash your machine fully back to stock. What it does is when you first plug it in, it actually captures the stock program and leaves it and programs it onto this device. Then from here, you can put your, your aftermarket tune onto the razor. And this thing holds multiple tunes. So you could have stage one, two, and three on this thing. And as long as you got about 20 minutes or so, could be a little less, you can go ahead and flash it at any time back and forth between whatever tunes. That's super crucial, guys. There's no downtime to this. This is why I like it so much. The other thing that's nice about this device is the fact that you can mount it and you can actually have gauges on it. We're gonna get into that, but I just wanna do some justification of why I'm doing this. So you're gonna say, okay, that's all good, Sean. So now you've told us why you picked this, but what does it actually do? There's a couple of reasons why I picked this. Number one, I don't, I don't condone this, but the high lifters are limited electronically to 70 miles an hour. You cannot get over that, the throttle blade closes. One of the perks of this is removing those limiters. It's gonna up your RPM limiter in low and high. For me, especially in low gear, uh, upping the limiter is nice. Uh, it definitely limits me quite a bit on this model. The other thing is, you know, your speed limiters are gonna be raised or removed, and it all depends on the tune and what you're asking for. We'll get into that. The other thing, you guys know I work on uh, getting this turbo hood installed, uh, getting the deflector so this is functional, get some more cooling inside this razor because cooling is always an issue. This is gonna drop our temperatures by 20 degrees for the fan on high. Uh, this is gonna be great. So this means the fan's gonna come on sooner, keep this thing cooler, keep it from overheating, getting that dummy light and shutting you down in limp mode. That was huge for me. The other thing is that I already run 91 octane in this razor. I'm not going to get into this debate. People are oh, you're uh, put, put 87 in it, you're, you're, you're whatever. Uh, I'm not going to get into this debate. I've always run 91 ethanol free gas and all my power sports stuff. Now I can actually take advantage of it because the timing is going to be increased. Now what Diogen is saying is probably a seven horsepower gain, which, you know, seven horsepower doesn't sound like much, but this is a 110 horsepower machine. Seven horsepower is quite a bit. The other thing that you're going to gain lots from is the fact that there is a ton of torque management on these machines. Tons. I mean, this thing is pulling timing the minute you get any wheel speed uh, or you start to spin. Things are going on in the ECU that you don't even realize. This really unlocks the potential for that on this machine. Um, with that being said, you know, you've got to be a smart rider. If you're going to start increasing performance of these units and you think you're just going to hold it wide open all the time on everything you're going to get at or you're going to encounter, you're gonna break some parts. So if you're the type of guy who can't control his right foot, this might not be the best thing for you. There's a lot of limiters built into these from the factory to keep you from tearing parts up. And if you're already a guy, I break, I break axles every ride, I break every axle there is known to men. Um, just put that back in the box, send it back. This is not for you. So I wanna throw that out to you guys. You gotta have a head whenever you're gonna tune or increase performance on a machine. So with that being said, I don't wanna drag on too long with this guys. Let's get into the first thing we gotta do when we get this. All right, welcome back guys. So I got you switched here so you can kind of get a bird's eye view of what I'm doing. So we're gonna open this back up, unpackage everything, unpackage the unit, and we're gonna take a look at the instructions. Yeah, I said don't look at the instructions, but Let's look at the instructions. All right. So, um, you know, it tells you a little bit about the information, about the device. Uh, it tells you about the power core software, which you don't need. Now it says in installing the power vision. So you don't need to secure it to the vehicle for this, but it doesn't want you to attach it to the diagnostic port. And then we can get started with it. So first off, Anytime you're dealing with electronics, flashing, anything of this sort, you're going to want to make sure you get a battery tender and make sure you got the full 12 volts of power, 12.8, 12.7, whatever it happens to be on this whenever you deal with the ECU. So we're going to go around. I've got a trickle charger that I'm going to put on this. 
So easy to get to the battery. I'm gonna lift this up. Throw the seat aside. There, good enough. Get to our battery. Here's our trickle charger. I'll put this down here. And I'm gonna go ahead and connect the trickle charger. We'll find the nearest plug. There we go. So there we go. So we got this thing charging right now. Let's go back to the front. So now that we got that, let's go around. Let's get to the diagnostic port. There she is. There we go. All right, there's the diagnostic port, guys. Not much room in there, really. Well, let's go back to our dyno jet here. We'll get our cable, our supplied cable out. There you go. You hear it clip, you know what's in. And we'll go ahead, plug it in the diagnostic port. There we go. So I'm just going to leave this unit sit here. And it tells us to turn the key on. It's going to be a little bit loud, guys. I got that CVT fan running. Getting started. So it says that no compatible stock files are found and ECU read is required to bring the process. So square to read or back to get out of the wizard. Let's go ahead and read it. So it says, hey, it can take up to 15 minutes to read the ECU. So this is a good reason why uh, I'm gonna go ahead and shut the lights off and uh, probably disconnect that fan, but it's a good reason why you want it on a trickle charger when it's doing this. It's, it's No one talks about doing it, but for me, whenever you're reading or doing something with the ECU, voltage is huge. So um, that's just my advice to you guys. So uh, let's catch back up with you guys once this thing's actually read. Hurry right, back guys. Uh, we are almost done. 99%. I also, uh, when I left you guys, I was supposed to hit the square button again to um, start the read. I didn't do that. So let's see what happens. This actually didn't take long. Like, I don't know, 10 minutes to get to this point, unless it's going to stay at 99% for, you know, the next 10 minutes. Um, this actually didn't take very long to read. Read successful, ECU read, and here we go. So VMB 564 B8HO.stock successfully saved. All right, return, searching for tune files. All required files found. Really? So let's go to tune. All right, so it has 1904-801 and 802. And then here's my stock file. Alrighty, so let's go and find out what these tunes are. I was actually surprised to see that we had tunes on here. Alright guys, so we're back. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this hooked back up to the machine. So it's nice, a dyno jet. Um, there we go, you hear it click. These things are coming fully, not only updated with all the tunes, but they also have all the newest firmware also in it, so you really don't have to do anything. Go ahead and turn this on. You guys notice I disconnected, turned the lights off. I disconnected the fan as well. All right, so all required tune files. So let's go ahead and select tune. We're gonna to go to the 19004801. So this is stock intake and stock exhaust. Now, let's hold on here. Before we do this, this would not be a video unless we actually took this machine out and did some zero to 60 pulls, you know, zero to 60, and get a baseline for this to actually see if these tunes from DinoJet are actually gonna work. So let's talk about this. All right guys, so a couple quick things before I hit that tune button, 
Let's just take a minute here. The first thing we need to do is get a baseline. Let's find out what this thing is doing, zero to 60. Now, what I've been able to download on my iPhone, let's get to the program here. So there's a lot of free apps out there that can do some zero to 60 based on GPS. And the one that I installed is called Rev2. And I've added my machine to it. And this is gonna allow me to do some zero to 60 pulls. So what I'm gonna do for zero to 60 pulls get out on pavement. I don't want to do this on dirt. I don't want traction to be an issue. Get it out on dirt. Get this thing up to temperature. Get it up over 180 degrees. Uh, make sure that the, you know, the belt's not being overworked. So I just want a nice gradual warm up. And then I want to do the best of three pulls. Within those three pulls, I also want a cool down period. So I'm going to allow the fan to turn on, get this thing back down to about 185, allow the belt to cool down and do a second pull and then do a third pull. And basically out of the three pulls, I should be able to come up with some sort of baseline. Now, before you go ahead and do that, a couple of things you need to do on your razor. Number one, especially before getting a tune, which is going to advance the ignition, pull your plugs out. Take a look at the condition of your plugs. Make sure your plugs are gapped within the uh, gap that's allowable from the factory. I'm gonna tell you, I have 80 hours on this machine, 80 hours on the factory plugs. I was actually outside of the gap. So I went ahead and gapped it right in the middle of the recommendation. That's really important. If the plugs look bad shape, uh, you know, if the gap's too open too much, get that gap closed up or just throw a new set in. Super important that the spark plug gap is correct, especially when you're gonna start advancing ignition and putting more stress on the ignition. It's gonna highlight a bad problem or a bad condition. So let's get this thing outside. Let's get this tested and let's see what we come back with. Just like that, we're back, we've done three runs, and here's the results. Now mind you, your results may be different than mine. What I am looking for is an apples to apples, oranges to oranges comparison. With the same phone, the same software, the same bike, the same conditions. So when I went out and did the three runs, I got 0 to 60 of 11.49, 11.22, and 11.50. So throwing out the one run, you can pretty much say that this thing's about 11.5 from 0 to 60. You got to remember, it's probably a little bit slower than most razors because of the simple sheer size of the tires. It's full weight, nothing removed. I'm not looking to set a land speed record, but it gives me a good baseline. Now I can get this thing tuned and we can actually find out if this actually added power. It says it adds seven horse, but what does that mean in 0 to 60 time? What are we actually seeing to the rear wheels in a game? with stock clutching. There's nothing done to the clutching here, aside from some of the improvements that I've done. Um, no clutch kit. So let's go ahead now, get this thing tuned. Let's get it back out and let's see how much quicker we actually are now. All right, welcome back guys. So here we are. So here is a description um, of the tune. You know, it talks about stock exhaust, stock intake, which is what this is. Uh, Altered main target AFR tables, so probably riched in the AFR where it needs to and leaned it out in other areas. Altered the VE, um, volumetric efficiency, raised rev limits, speed limits, raised limits for two foot. Altered the DWB tables, and you'll see a speedo calibration here. So let's talk about this. I actually called DinoJet and spent some time with them on the phone. Let's take a look here what I found out. So let's just highlight some of the tune features here. So low rev limit and high rev limit are at 9,200. Fan on's at 194 and off at 184. That's actually 10 degrees lower than factory. Speed limiter has been bumped to 95 miles an hour. Now, I actually called DinoJet and had them walk me through. We installed the PowerCore uh, software and I uploaded the tune off this and was actually able to make a speedometer adjustment. 
So 29.5 to 32.5 is about 9.9%. Uh, I actually did the correction down to nine. Uh, and what this did is I increased the speedometer speed 9% to make up for these almost 33 inch tall tires, these 32 fives. So this pretty much brings uh, my speedometer in line um, to act as if I had the 29 fives installed. So my speedometer should be a-okay. Uh, that is a really nice feature and one of the you know one of the selling points is this is even if i went back to 29 fives or say i went to back to trail tires i could go ahead and tune for that and re-upload the tune or reflash the tune onto the ecu so this is this is awesome this is one of the reasons why i love this thing throttle input's been remapped in high gear and low gear hopefully in high gear this gets rid of all that jerkiness torque management's either been removed or lowered uh, or limited um, where needed. Uh, seat belt bypass is on, so you don't need your seat belt on. And reverse override limiter has been increased, but DinoJet couldn't tell me to what um, limit it was set to. Uh, that's the only thing I need to follow back up with them. So I hope that gives you guys a, a good, um, you know, overview of what this is available of course in the power core software i actually made the speedo calibration i put this line in the tune info so i know about it also include the stock value if this is something that you guys are interested in doing or let's say uh you know you guys want to modify maybe the fan on fan off you can actually do this in the software they provide give dinojet a call they'll walk you through uh you know maybe if there's enough requests for this sort of thing maybe i'll do a video on this and we'll just do you know the real basic you know, we can, we can look at all this stuff, but, uh, for the intents and purposes of this video, I don't want to get that in depth in here. All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, we're going to hit the, uh, start button on this and we're going to go ahead and, uh, start tuning this thing. All right. So here we go, guys. It says flash complete to verify flash, turn key off and then on. So let's go in here. I don't need this on. Okay, see the unit turned off. Let's turn it on. Let's make sure it fires up. No lights? Yep, no lights on. Let's reach down. There we go. Wow. Actually, that's a cold start, guys. That sounds smooth. This thing usually, you know, sputters a little bit when it first starts. But uh, shut this off. That was actually a nice start. That's impressive. Um, hey, maybe that's a thing, a sign of things to come. But uh, all right, guys. So let's get this thing disconnected. Now that we got the tune done. No lights on the dash. This was flash. This was pretty, uh, this is pretty quick. That was only maybe 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes to, uh, to flash. Make sure that clips in good. You don't want to get dirt. We'll go ahead and, uh, put our hood back on. There we go. Going to go ahead, take the, um, trickle charger off, get the seat back in and, uh, away we go. So, uh, let me check back with you guys. So we had a full day of tuning yesterday. No, it was a full day of tuning. Full day of driving yesterday. Really wanted to get you guys uh, some solid, concrete evidence of performance and also give you my driving thoughts with it tuned. So let's start off with zero to 60 times. Let's get into this. Now, CVTs are really tricky, as in they usually shift out. They don't always shift out at the same RPM 
uh, and performance sometimes varies from run to run. I did about four runs. I threw the most oddball run out, looked at the top three, and then took the slower of the two combined times. So basically I tried to find two times that were very close together to make that my average. So when we were stock, we were about two runs of 11.5 and one run of 11.3. Yesterday, I had two runs of 10.8 and one run of 10.3. So we're looking at about three quarters of a second um, all the way down to potentially a full second off the 0 to 60 time with no clutch tuning, just the tune itself. That's pretty impressive. Um, and, and these dyno jet tunes uh, are being told that are actually a pretty soft tune-up um, compared to some of these aftermarket ones, which was fine by me. Now, shift out. I knew if the shift out RPM increased, I was making more power and absolutely did. I saw upwards of almost 300 RPM increase in shift out on this machine. So I know that it's putting more power to the clutches down. Though, so those are two ways I was able to identify that this actually worked. So let's talk about drivability because for me, wide open throttle performance is great, but uh, you know, and it, and it proved that this does work. But let's talk about drivability. High gear, First off, starting it on a cold start is wonderful. It, it, it drives so much better. Um, it starts so much better from a cold start. Runs so much nicer. High gear, throttle input, beautiful. No more jerky starts, very smooth. Throttle's very linear. As I push down, it responds. It's almost like a drive-by cable system now. Super nice. High gear, a lot of people complain with the high lifters. Uh, trail Rock Edition, maybe not so much, or Rock Crawlers, but the high gear, the throttle, especially the first half of it, was really weak. Um, you had to push down quite a ways to get to where you needed to. They bumped that up. Uh, high, uh, low gear, by no means, in the throttle is a jackrabbit, but definitely the sensitivity has been increased, and it's actually really nice. Um, I've got no complaints. I was really worried that they might have turned that up too much. They didn't. It was awesome. So let's talk about drivability on the road. Perfect. No hiccups, no pops. Didn't hear anything that was out of the ordinary, but throttle response, so much improved. I just love you rolling at 20, 25 miles an hour, stab that throttle on high, even with these things measuring 33 inches tall, kick it sideways down the road you went and pulled. Same thing, we're doing the wide open throttle pulls for you guys, trying to get these zero to 60s. I really felt stock that there were some dead spots. I just felt it wasn't pulling as well in some spots as, as, as the mile per hours came up. This thing just pulled steady, steady, steady to 60 miles an hour. Couldn't be happier. Um, the fan came on at 194, kicked off at 184. Um, that was awesome. Just drivability overall, super happy. Um, even got a chance to really test this thing out in low gear, played in some snow gear, we're still melting, um, but definitely tried to give it a good run. I can't say enough. This really felt like I was driving on the 29.5s again. Uh, instead of, you know, these 32.5, 33 tall tires. So, you know, for no clutch changes, uh, I am just tickled pink by this. I'm not trying to sell you guys stuff. And some people are going to come on. Oh, I got no problems. My high lifter, I can run 36. Inch. That's all great. Um, but for me, guys, I could tell this thing in high gear didn't have the power it used to have. And that's why I wanted to tackle. All right. So. 10 minutes to switch in between tunes. This thing's super quick. You know, you can set up gauges. Uh, I'm sure I could do a full other video on some of the features of this thing, pulling diagnostic codes and things like that. Um, guys, I really think this is the way to go. Um, I don't think flash sending your ECUA is the way to go. There is a lot of vendors actually online that will also sell you a custom tune for your Razor. So, um, which works out great, right? We can head to Louie, powermods.com. Pick this unit up, and if you don't happen to like the stock tune that, that comes on the Dino Jet preloaded, you can always reach out to a vendor who deals with Dino Jet to get you a custom tune email to you, and then you can try it from there. Also, if you don't see your tune, all tunes are preloaded on the devices for all the razors, 14 to 18 1000s in this particular case. Um, Dino Jet will also make you a tune. So if you don't see what you need, you can go ahead and send them an email. They're super good. I worked with them yesterday. Uh, it was really nice to, uh, to be able to talk with them and go through the software uh, and, and things that could be changed. So, uh, you know, I can't say enough. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you found it helpful, hit the like button, hit the subscribe, hit the share. 
Uh, if you have any questions, comment down below. If you guys want to know about pricing, availability, questions on this unit, go ahead and hit up Power Mods, hit up Louis Skibo, give him a call. And uh, what can I say, guys? Another video review done. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we're less than one week away. We're getting out riding. We're going to get some footage of this thing all done. And uh, looking forward to it. So stay tuned. Thanks, guys.